Fin Chase is about a world record or a tournament. Very targeted, very specific. We raise the bar for ourselves because for me, that brings out the best of me. That juices me. Oh my God, it's a giant. World record fish. How cool. <laughs> Never, ever, ever, ever give up. This is Fin Chasers. This week on the Fin Chasers, we're in Beach Haven for the White Mon Invitational, the oldest White Mon tournament in the country. This is where it all began for me, for my tournament obsession with offshore fishing. In 2004, we won the whole thing, and that's where it all began. My name is Dave Ridley. I'm the chairman of the Beach Haven White Marlin Invitational Tournament here in beautiful Beach Haven, New Jersey. This is a great storied tournament with a long history, oldest white marlin tournament in the country. This is our 48th year, which is a wonderful achievement for offshore fishing tournaments. I have some adverse weather conditions offshore, but we still have 31 great boats fishing with us this year. We've had some weigh-ins today, and we expect a lot of boats to fish tomorrow, Friday, and perhaps a handful Saturday. My name is Chris Anderson. I was one of the early, early members of the Tuna Club. We used to meet over at the Acme Hotel prior to the club being built. And then a group got together and decided we really should have a place to meet. And uh, guys would come down on Friday nights, get information, who caught fish during the week. Uh, and that, that was a part of it. Big thing, to, it took about three or four guys. Dick Ryan was really the hardcore mover in raising the money. We sold uh, bonds to build the first clubhouse. And of course, we lost that club in uh, Sandy. And now we have this new, uh, very beautiful facility here called the Beach Haven Marlins Tuna Club. It has been here since early 60s. Started in the late 50s, in the, in the 50s in the Acme. Great to be a member and tickled to pink to be here at all these years. My earliest memory is when I was born in 72 and I'm pretty sure by 74 I remember fishing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did. It was, whether it was flounder, crabs off the gar, anything off the garvey that they built in their garage. And I would come home from school and my mom was a home ec teacher. My dad caught the fish and she cooked it up for dinner and that's what we did. And that's my life and I love it. <laughs> Carl Anderson, Beach Haven, New Jersey, Pompano Beach, Florida. Captain of the Briar Patch, a 72 Merritt. Serenita, 63 Merritt. And uh, traveled all around the world fishing most of the, most of the big game spots in the world. Fished on the uh, anthracite with Dick Ryan, one of the founding members of the club, and the guy who was really the big push to build the first clubhouse. This was the event of the year. Uh, I mean, I grew up within line sight of the club. And uh, every time we went out on our boat, we went past the club. It was a, it was a big deal. This was uh, the beginning of what became my career. I mean, I've been able to go everywhere in the world, starting from right here in Little Beach Haven, New Jersey. But the seed that was planted was the White Marlin Invitational. One of the captains of uh, Bob Gaskell's boat, the BB, BD, started to uh, say we could have our, our own tournament here. And right from the first year, it was a very, very successful tournament. So th this was one of the, this is the earliest White Marlin tournament. This tournament and this club are very rich in history. And being in my backyard makes this that much cooler.
No matter how much we try and prep before the tournament, the night of the tournament, or the night of the first day of fishing, always goes into the wee hours in the morning. But the closer we get to sunrise, the more excited I get. In any mall and a tuna fish tournament that we do, the Roffers report becomes critical to where we're going to decide to fish. We pour over those things over and over again. Base it on where we fished most recently, what kind of information that we get from the ROFs report, and then we put that into where historically we've caught fish in the past. Here we are at the Beach Haven White Marlin Invitational with Team Finn Chaser and Captain Frank Ristatelli. Stay tuned for day one results. Seven o'clock, line's in, baby. 2017 White Mullen Invitational is now underway for the Fin Chasers. White Mullen is super elusive and very hard to hook, but I think we've done the leg work and we're ready to go. Let's just hope that these fish are hungry. Yeah, well, I just figured I'd try it deep. I didn't try deep yet. I'm starting to think maybe they're not hungry. He's on it. Good boy, good boy, Frankie. Finally, we get a bite. Is he there? It's a short one here. Oh. And just when you think you got one hooked, you don't. That's white mullein fishing. As day one comes to an end, there's no white mullein boated. That just means we have to work twice as hard tomorrow. So it's back to strategizing. On our cell phones, checking the ROFS report, calling people, doing whatever we can so that we are ahead of the pack. Well, here we are, day two, solid six to eight footers. We ran 97 miles, and we are here at the spot where we finished up yesterday. They play in this stuff. It's rough. Other than the tough ride, I'd rather have that, you know, than we have flat, calm conditions like we had at the beginning part of yesterday. It might not look so good at home, but I'm excited about what we're seeing here, and we're hoping for a big win. This is a swinging for the fences, all or nothing attempt, and hopefully, we'll be right. We busted our butts at that spot, tried and tried, but now we gotta change it up. We ran back to where we started yesterday here in the Baltimore Canyon. Much different sea conditions. Hopefully we can find the bait that we found inshore. We got two hours left, bottom of the ninth, we gotta make something happen. I got tapped. I still haven't given up, even though right now, it's not looking very good for Team Finn Chaser. The last five minutes of the tournament has been a real hard few days here. We tried real, real hard, but when you're swinging for the fences, sometimes you strike out. We'd like a nice fat white or a nice chunky yellow fin. When it comes to mullein fishing, in my opinion, white mullein 
is at the top of the most challenging fish to catch. They have a very small mouth, a very big eye, and they are super finicky. It's because of this that I love targeting these fish. This has been an awesome season with some very awesome days on the water and some not so awesome days on the water. Take a look at some of the better days. Oh, this rock isn't slippery at all. Let go your finger. Let go your finger. The fish were being lazy, for lack of better words, and uh, so we come down here and spotted this and went to a size 16. And it's like the first real good drift over him and smoked it. Oh yeah, for, didn't even take more than one shot. He was, was awesome. he wanted it for sure. Five minutes? That's unbelievable. How cool was that? How explosive was that when he took it? It was unbelievable. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> sorry, Actually, Frank. I'm not sorry. <laughs> At all. Oh, dude! <laughs> Never, That's ever, like ever, ever, ever give up. That was worth this whole trip, man. What a fish. almost four. Women 16 pound line class, done. Done, done, done. What, what are we at, like 30 minutes? Oh my gosh, that was the sickest eat I've ever seen. Oh, oh too bad! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, before yesterday, I thought it was my show. I mean, <laughs> But this is typical. I mean, usually the cameramen catch the fish. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh my God. That is a haul. Put that rod down. You are done. I'm sorry. What do? What words do you even say? What do you even have to say about this? That is a huge. Here's the deal. They're hard records. Yeah, they're not. We're breaking. Breaking. We're not setting records. We're breaking records right now. Lake Chattu, right here in Western North Carolina. Unbelievable. Nice. Ahí va, jefe. 
¡Va molesta! ¡Va a la caña! ¡Va a la caña, jefe! ¡No se ve con usted, jefe! ¡Está sancochado! ¡Recógese rápido! ¡Recógese! ¡Ahí va, ahí va! ¡Bájale, baja el freno! ¡Ahí va otra vez, jefe! ¡Baja el freno! ¡Ahí va, jefe! ¡Va molesta! ¡Va a la caña! ¡Va a la caña, jefe! ¡There you go! ¡That's one release! You're a proud father. Yeah. <laughs> ahí va otra vez, ahí va otra vez. A little tighter. All the deadliest sins are like one night in New York. Oh! <laughs> now you're showing off, Bobby. Dude. Oh! <laughs> Jersey Tarpon. We're on the board, folks. Bluefish, Varen's on a bridge, gives you goosebumps. This is awesome, folks. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! We got a little 82 for our first bad boy warm up a little bit before we get to start breaking world records. You ready? I got a big that blue fish on fly. Yeah, baby. Pat A, 11.30, a thousand yards. B8, that's how you sent the shark. That's how you sent the hook. There you go. Rock and roll, baby. No good? It's a pretty shark right there. We need one that's about 200 pounds heavier. Start coming towards the fish. Pull it up for a second, Nick. Let him get that plug in. There you go. 
go. Took us a while, but we finally got him. Leave him for my backyard. And the 28 foot Buddy Davis come offshore and catch a fish like this. Get bit by a white moan, have a chance at a big eye. That's good fishing anywhere in the world. And it's happening right here in New Jersey. As always, without you all watching, there is no show. So thank you. And until next time, fin chases. <laughs>